Hello everyone. I want to start a new series of videos on ABAP cloud development. Uh, in today's session though, I want to talk about application jobs. Uh, so I want to talk about how you can schedule jobs in RESTful ABAP programming model uh, business objects. Uh, so as you're all aware, uh, starting from 2022, SAP S4HANA 2022, uh, even in the private edition and also on premise, uh, it is recommended to use the ABAP cloud development model. Uh, of course, the classic ABAP can still be used in the private edition and on premise, uh, but it is recommended to use the ABAP cloud development model uh, so that you can be upgrade ready anytime. Uh, of course, in the public edition, SAP S4 HANA public edition, uh, ABAP cloud development model is the only programming model of choice. Uh, whereas in the private edition and in the on-premise edition, uh, it is recommended to use the ABAP cloud development. Uh, so today, I want to introduce application jobs. Uh, so what is an application job? Uh, so there are some tasks uh, that are related to an application that you may want to run on a periodic basis. So you may want to run it weekly or nightly, and then you may also want to monitor how the application job ran in the background as well. And uh, there's also another use case where if if there is a long running task, uh, then you may want to run it asynchronously. Uh, so even though you don't want to run it periodically, uh, but you can still run a long running task uh, by kicking it off. Uh, so for all of these use cases, uh, you can use the application job. Uh, so let me quickly give you a glance at how the application job looks like. Uh, so what you can do is uh, uh, you can add this as a tile. Uh, so the application job is the Fury application. Uh, you can add it as a tile to your home page and uh, you can see once you open up the application job you have the create button uh, so you can click create uh, and you have uh, various templates uh, so there are all these uh, predefined templates for this particular application or uh, you can also create your own job template uh, a custom job template and that's what I have created I've created a custom job template called products uh, and what you can do is you can go ahead and select any predefined template or a template that you've created uh, go to step two where you can provide all the scheduling options uh, so if you want to run it every night uh, then you can define the recurrence pattern and then you go through this wizard and a lot of the times uh, your task may require some input parameters. Uh, so in this case, I only have one input parameter, but your task may require four or five or six different input parameters. Uh, you can pass all these uh, input parameters and then you can schedule this uh, job template. And based on the uh, settings in your job template, based on your scheduling options, the input parameters, uh, it will either run nightly or weekly and so on. So this is how the job template uh, works. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can do this all programmatically. Uh, so let me quickly show you what I have and then we will go step by step in building this application right here. Uh, so I have a database table and if I look at this uh, database table, uh, it's a fairly simple table. Uh, it has a name field, a description field, and a cost field. Uh, name and description, obviously they are string and the cost is an integer uh, data type. So if I look at the values in this uh, table right here, uh, so I only have one row and the cost, the initial cost uh, is 200. Uh, I have a name of the laptop and description is IBM ThinkPad and the cost is 200. Now what I want to do is I want to schedule a task uh, that runs every minute and it will increment this cost by a certain amount uh, based on the input parameter. So in this case, my input parameter is going to be three. Uh, so it's going to increment this cost by 203, 206, 209. And uh, I want to run it for a maximum of uh, three iterations. Uh, so it'll run three times and then this uh, job will stop. And what I have done is, uh, if you're familiar with the RAP programming model, uh, you can go ahead and build all the way up to this uh, UI. You can build all the UI fairly easily. Uh, so I have a UI uh, aspect to this uh, project. Uh, so I can go ahead and preview this uh, UI application. Uh, and in this UI application, I have a button that says uh, schedule job. And when I click on this uh, button right here, so you can see that uh, there is this uh, uh, schedule job. Uh, but let me also show that uh, right now the cost is uh, 200. That's the only row that we saw in the table. And when I click on schedule job, uh, it's going to 
go ahead and schedule this job. Uh, ignore this UI. The UI is immaterial. Uh, but what it has done in the background, it has uh, scheduled a job. Uh, so if I click go here, I will see three jobs that have been scheduled. Uh, and it is for 123, 124, and 125. And what it's uh, going to do is it's going to increment uh, the cost by three uh, every time this uh, task runs every minute. Now, this is through the UI. Uh, but what you can also do uh, is you can also call the API uh, to schedule the same tasks as well. Uh, so if you have some kind of an external tool, uh, then you can use an API to call this uh, task as well, uh, to schedule the task as well. Uh, so in my case, I have Postman. And what I need to do is I need to pass in a post request uh, so and uh, to this uh, scheduled job endpoint. And this is also going to schedule the job as well. Uh, and because this is post, uh, I need to pass in the CSR of token. So I will do a get uh, to start with. Uh, so I'm going to do a get. And this is going to get me a CSR of token. And then I'm going to do the schedule job, the post schedule job, and passing this uh, CSR of token. So uh, once I pass the CSR of token, uh, this is going to schedule a job for me as well. Uh, so if I click go here, uh, now I should see six, uh, one, two, three, four, five. I think one of them has finished. Uh, so you can see that there are uh, five scheduled jobs and the one that just recently finished. Uh, so if I go to this uh, table right here, I should see that the value of this uh, table uh, should have incremented by at least three, uh, but if not more, right? Uh, so yeah, so it's a three. Uh, by the next minute, it should be 206 and so on. OK, so that's uh, how uh, that's the application that we are going to build programmatically, uh, how we can uh, run a task in the background using application jobs. Uh, but uh, a little theory uh, behind, behind how this whole thing happens uh, before we jump into the programming itself. Uh, so uh, how this whole thing works. Uh, so what we need initially uh, is we need to create a business logic class. And this is going to. Uh, implement uh, two interfaces. Uh, so the very first interface uh, is the IFAPJDT uh, for design time execute object. And uh, you need to implement this uh, get parameters uh, method. Uh, so more than likely, uh, when you run a task, uh, that task is going to require some input parameters. Uh, so this interface and this method uh, gets all the required int uh, parameters uh, to run your task. Uh, so that's the whole idea of uh, implementing this interface uh, is so that you can get all the required parameters to running your task. Uh, the next interface that you need to implement uh, is the IFAPJ runtime execute object. And you will be implementing the execute method of this interface. And here, uh, what you do is you get all the input parameters uh, from here because this one already has support for the in input parameters. Uh, and then you have have the business logic, the task that you need to execute. Uh, so that business logic uh, goes here. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and uh, do something to your business object, uh, your wrap business object, uh, then you can put your EML code, uh, your ABAP and your EML code here. Uh, and this is the task that's going to be executed on a periodic basis. Uh, so this is the first step that you would do, uh, create this business logic class. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to create a job catalog log entry. And this uh, job catalog entry has all the details on how to run the uh, run this uh, class. Uh, but uh, more importantly, uh, it contains a reference to this uh, business logic class. Uh, so when you create a job catalog entry, uh, you have to pass in this uh, business logic class or whatever business cl logic class that you have. Uh, so it's uh, going to be tightly uh, coupled to this uh, business logic class. Uh, so I can show you one way of doing it. You can do it from Eclipse as well. Uh, you can do it programmatically as well, uh, but I'll show you how you can do it from Eclipse. You go new and then you go to other ABAP repository object and then you say job catalog entry. And here when you select the job catalog entry, uh, it's going to ask, and this is a mandatory uh, parameter, uh, is uh, which, where is your business logic class? Uh, so here you can go here and say, uh, and you can point to your business logic class. And this is uh, going to 
tightly couple this uh, job catalog entry to this business logic. Uh, but uh, we will do it programmatically, but I'm just quickly showing you how this uh, job catalog entry works. Uh, so main thing is it is uh, tightly coupled to this uh, business logic class. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to create a job template. Now, this job template has a one to end relationship. So you can have any number of uh, job templates uh, for this uh, job catalog entry. And you can think of a job template as a variant of the job catalog entry. Uh, basically, what it does is uh, it contains uh, all or some or all of the parameters. So you don't have to pass all the parameters. You can pass in a minimal set of parameters or you can pass the zero parameters as well uh, to run this uh, business logic class. Uh, but if you pass a minimal set, uh, then this uh, interface right here, this get parameters right here, uh, it also has support for default values. Uh, so the parameters that you don't pass in, uh, it has uh, default values for those uh, parameters. Um, so here you can have uh, a job template that runs uh, weekly, or you can have a job template that runs nightly, and you can have a job template that passes a different set of parameters. Like I said, uh, this uh, you can have any number of uh, job templates. Uh, so in our example, though, uh, we only have one job template uh, for this one job catalog entry, and this job catalog entry obviously is tied to this uh, business logic class. So here there is a strict one-to-one -one relationship. Uh, then what you can do is you can have an external application and this external application pretty much uh, schedules the job template. Uh, you can have, uh, you can pass in like uh, the scheduling parameters. You can pass the parameters from here as well. Uh, it gets, uh, it gets transported all the way to this business logic class uh, so that the business logic class can execute. Uh, so this is the theory behind how it works. Uh, so in the next session, uh, we will delve a little bit deeper and we will uh, implement the business logic class, the job catalog entry, the job template, and so on. Okay, uh, see you in the next uh, session. Thank you.